Julian from Elephant TV, and we are with Gerald Williams, IFBB Pro Gerald Williams. IFBB Pro, which oh. is to me that's still a big deal. You know, it just shows the dedication, it shows the effort, and just like the consistency, right? You know, of, of years of training, mentally, physically, the eating, the nutrition, and on top of that, guys, he's consistently and always traveling. And right now we're in a hotel room. So we're just uh, like, obviously, right? <laughs> and I think this is really interesting. And he actually pointed it out that a lot of, you know, the bodybuilding enthusiasts want to see this type of footage and uh, just just know what this type of lifestyle entails. And that's exactly what we're gonna get into right now. But first and foremost, let's find out a bit of history. So let's just jump right into that. So yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, my name's Gerald. I um, I started competing. I want to say maybe in two thousand four, um, two thousand three, two thousand four. Uh, I won the Teenage Nationals in two thousand five. Won Teenage California in two thousand five. Um, I competed. I think I did the Junior Nationals in oh seven. Uh, I won the Sacramento in oh eight. I got tenth of the Nationals. My worst placing ever in any show was at the first Nationals I did. Um, How did you deal with that? Uh, you know, I, it was a it was a point in time when I was like, you know what, I can either focus on bodybuilding because at that point I was like deemed as like, oh, you're gonna be pro super young and blah blah blah. And I was like, well, at that point I was in my first semester of graduate school and it was like academic probation or professional bodybuilding and getting to the nationals really refocused me to be like, get your life together. So um, at that point I had taken a long time away from bodybuilding, seven years. Um, so from 22 to 29 I didn't compete at all. Um, I, I played hockey in grad school, I did regular stuff, got a couple businesses together. Um, I finished my first round of grad school, got pulled out of, I got recruited actually from my second round of grad school to the, one of the jobs I have now. Um, so with that being said, I took a long time out of the sport. In 2015, I came back, um, I won the LA, I got second at the USA's and then I won the North Americans. Um, and then 2016 was my first year competing as a pro. Um, so in that show, I did the Golden State and got ninth, the Ferrigno and got seventh, and the Sheru Classic over in Dubai, I got fifth. So it's progressively improving, and so hopefully this year we're getting ready for the Cal Pro and the Mayhem and the, um, and the Vancouver Pro. So hopefully to win one of those and qualify for Olympia. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Has That's anybody cool. competed more than you? <clears throat> oh yeah, no guys have done like eight shows wow. in a year, man. I, you know, I think I think at this level I'm learning is once you get in shape, um, you know, there's there's a science to to being able to to understand the limitations of your body. Like I, when I got my pro card, I was neurologically I was tired um, because it, I hadn't competed in so long, and it's it's a grind, you know, with the cardio, with the training, with the posing, with the the diet and everything. So. Really, from December to March, December fifteen of March to sixteen, I didn't go to the gym. I did. I ate normal food. I spent four months out of the gym. It was ridiculous. I'll probably shoot you guys a picture of like the beginning to the end. It's crazy. I just couldn't. I just didn't want it at that point. I just and so, and the crazy part is actually I think why my placings improved so much over that period of time. Really, the first show I did was in August. The last show was in November. Was because my body had a chance to actually get back in shape. Um, you know, it's kind of hard from going to be a regular dude off the street to being a pro bodybuilder in four months. I'm not Kevin Lebroni. Right. <laughs> Kevin, you've got phenomenal genetics. I don't know how you do it. It didn't work for me. I learned it the first year. We won't do it ever. Do it again. <laughs> um, yeah. So I mean, that was for me. I was really tired, and I, so I needed to to really take a break mentally from what it took. And now I feel like I have a better understanding of the the mental capacity required to really be able to to do this the way it's supposed to be done, which really means eating clean year round. So, you know, this is why I travel with my food um, because it's so important. Um, you know, the closer you stay in striking distance to a prep, you know, I could probably do a guest posing in like three or four weeks now. Um, you know, I, I'm not super far, like, oh, what are you getting ready for? I'm like, I haven't started my prep yet. So it's good that I've been able to um, learn how to be a good professional. Chris Cormier, who's been a mentor of mine for a long time, because I was like, diet year round, diet year round. And so I heard that and it makes a lot of sense because you're always, you don't have to kill yourself to get in shape and you can retain more muscle and you'll look better, you know, crisper, not as tired um, when you get to the stage. And you have the ability to do five, six shows a year and be okay. Yeah. 
Jeez. All right. So that's that's actually a lot of information. That's <laughs> that's great. Talk about history. I, I think we're well established that you are serious. Like what you do. This is not just. Uh, I mean, maybe it is still a hobby, but like, what do you what do you categorize it as? Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's um, it's at an apex now of hobby to business. Um, I think initially, as you come up as an amateur. Um, you have to love this. Even as a professional, you have to love this. This has got to be something that's in you. Um, you know, I walked away and it just kind of found its way back to me. It's like, nope, come on, come on back. <laughs> come on back. And I was like, oh, man, you're killing me. Um, and so if it's in you, it's in you. Uh, you can try and walk far and far away from it, but it'll find you because it's in you. You can't. The only thing you can't walk away from is yourself in that sense. Um, and so I, I understand... At this point now, we're at really, and when I say it's at the apex, it's really taking it from being a hobby of something I enjoy to now there's a business aspect of it. Um, you know, there's a marketing aspect of it. That you're building a brand of yourself. Mm-hmm. You're, you're having to be, I call myself like I'm kind of like a recluse as far as bodybuilding is concerned because I'm not at the shows, I'm not at the expos. But now as this is a business, I have to understand that it's more than just eating and training. Right? It's about the fans. The fans, you guys are the lifeblood of the sport. And so it's about creating accessibility to the fans to be able to say, like, well, I have questions, or this is what I'm trying to do, or I'm also working, or I'm also going to school. Like, how did you do it? And so um, I think it's a maturation for me and understanding, like, what, what this really means um, socially and, like, the social responsibility in the context of what that sits um, and how to transform that into much more of the business aspect opposed to it being a hobby. Wow. Beautifully said. I, I, think, I, I think you can transcribe this and put it into a book. That's one thing that I probably want to touch on later. Just like um, really well spoken. Thank like, you. Wow. Thank you. I, I don't even feel – I feel I'm sitting with a bodybuilder professional because of his physique. But just, just hearing him, um, it's just like I think I'm sitting with an author. Like a I'm New a York Times bestseller. Nerd. Yeah. Nerds, we rule the world. Just if you're yeah. a nerd out there watching <laughs> – your time has come. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you why do you say you're a nerd? Like what? Oh man, I'm totally a nerd. You know, I um, you know, I I, I read. Um, you know, I teach. I, I like I like studying stuff. I like learning. Um, I'm not a big party guy. I'm not a big going out guy. Um, I've been a musician for a long time. Like I toured for a while when I was younger. What? Um, so for me, it's never been about. You know, when I was an undergrad, I was working club security for like three and a half years, like five nights a week. So for me, it's never been about going out to party, going out to do stuff, because, you know, I spent from the ages of 19 to 22 pretty much at the club every night. Um, so I got that a lifetime of that out of the way. Um, and so I say I'm a nerd just because, yeah, I'm, I'm focused. I've got my goals. I got the things that I'm working on. Um, I'm big on accomplishing those things. I'm big on learning. And so, yeah, it's not about being cool because, you know, being cool is all right. But I, I think you're, you're much more cool when you're true to yourself and what it is that you really want to be and do. And I think there's a brand of cool that's sold to everyone um, through consumption behavior and other stuff that isn't really, really cool. It's just what's going to make money. So be aware. That's deep. So what do you tell people watching that, you know, watch other people who, and who are influenced by others and, and say, you know, I want to be that type of cool and I don't find myself to be, you know, a part of that group. Yeah, you've got to find your own comfort space, you know. It took me a while to really figure out, I don't like normal people stuff. I don't like to really go out to restaurants to eat. I like my food at home. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with that. I don't really like to go out a lot because I don't really like to dance. I can play music, I can't dance. It is what it is. We well, all have our limitations. What, what uh, music instrument do you play? I play bass. I play drums. So I, I toured, I've recorded, I've done a lot of stuff like that. I'm trying to get back into gigging, gigging now, but the problem is that it's, with everything else, I'm running out of hours. I've actually run out of hours in the day. So... Um, it's really hard for me to try and take anything else on because I think even a couple weeks ago I like gave up sleeping for like a week. It was like, oh my it was like God. let's take these two hour naps from like 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. and run the day again, which is the worst thing you can try and do as a bodybuilder because you need sleep. Um, but as I've also learned, I have to prioritize certain things at that point in time. I had some projects that were running. I was like, I can do this for these couple weeks and then I can get back to a normal schedule as I know I'm going to get closer to a prep. Um, so sometimes you have to juxtaposition your schedule to make sacrifices for other things. It's not always about bodybuilding all the time. So, is yeah. is, is there any one tip or model that you follow when it comes to like uh, your time management? Um, yeah, you know, I try and deal with the most pressing thing in front of me. Um, you know, from the science side, you know, there's only so much capacity we have in working memory. You know, you can hold five to nine things in your head at one time with working memory. And so I try to make a list of everything that I have to do so that I can 
free up some cognitive processes for myself to be able to think through problems. Um, and with that being said, I typically try and handle the low hanging fruit first um, on my list. And then I also try and handle the things that have the highest monetized return first. Um, and then from there, I kind of work around like what has an impending deadline or what has the most serious impact on some other responsibility I have. So I, I try and make decisions based upon the level of severity and or its monetized return. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, you just you sound like you're all business. So where does you know the social life come in? And you said you don't like going out, no restaurants. <laughs> yeah, my wife hates me. She's like, she's like. <laughs>